Hello, today we're going to take a look at an outline of the periodic table and highlight the key parts. Firstly, we can see we've got the atomic number and relative atomic mass on, different, on the different elements, but if we count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, those bottom numbers, these are the atomic numbers, and the periodic table is arranged in order of atomic numbers. In the big section here in the middle, between the numbers 2 and 3, between groups 2 and 3, we have what's called the transition metals the transition metals and that's found in that big block in the middle. What we can actually do is just remove a lot of the detail and just look at an outline of the periodic table and see how it is arranged overall. So here's our, our outline of the periodic table and the first thing to remember is that that section on the right hand side in the pinky red sort of color that's the metals, sorry the non-metals, these are the non-metals. A stairway drawn between boron and aluminium all the way down and that will show the non-metals whereas in blue all the elements there are metals and as we said before that big chunk in the middle these are our transition metals we need to know the properties of metals so here is a list of those properties metals are shiny when cut we often add that little detail about being cut because some metals will react with oxygen in the air and that will cause them to lose their shine so some metals react and get a layer of oxidation on their surface and lose their shine. So we add the little when cut detail there. Conductors of heat and electricity is a feature of metals and they are also ductile. That means they could be made into wires or pulled, or pulled and stretched into wires. They are all malleable, which means they can be bent and hammered into shape. And the next one is a chemical property they form positive ions when they react. So that means when they react with other elements, they lose electrons. They can lose one or more electrons and that causes them to be positive ions. In terms of our non-metals, they are poor conductors of heat and electricity. They are often brittle, which means they can crack or break easily. That is of course, when we're talking about metals that are solid. So they can crack or break easily for not metals that are solid, elements that are solid. And they form negative ions when they react. So whereas metals lose electrons to become positive ions, non-metals, if they react, will gain electrons to become negative ions. The next thing to look at is the idea of groups. So if you look along the top there, we've got the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 0. And these are called the group numbers. These are the group numbers and they go from 1 through to 7 and then to 0. Now the key thing about the groups is that they have similar properties in terms of the elements that are in the groups. So all group 1 metals will have similar properties, group 2 will have similar properties and so on. And this is in fact a key feature in terms of how the elements are or were arranged. Going down the side here, we have what's called the periods. So we go one, two, three, four, and so on. And the periods go across, but they also tell you the number of shells in the atoms of the elements that are present in that period. So if you take an element from period three, the atom of that element will have three shells in its structure. Okay, so the periods tell you the number of shells on the atoms. And in fact, we need to add one more point here that we've missed out about the metals. And that is that they all have high melting points and high boiling points, apart from the metal mercury, which actually is a liquid at room temperature. But in general, all the rest of the metals have high melting and boiling points. That's one of the features that needs to go in the metals column. Now, we're going to look at some patterns in terms of the electron structure of the elements in different groups. So if we take the top element in group one, that's lithium. The electron arrangement is shown there. So we've got two electrons in the first shell and one in the second shell. If we look at the second element, we can see the electron structure is more detailed or is, has more electrons, and this is sodium, but we would see the electron structure as two, eight, one. So two in the first, eight in the second, and one in the third shell. For our next element, potassium, that's two, eight, eight, one. And as we can see, we have one electron in the atoms, in the outer shells of atoms in group one elements. Okay, so there's the elements in group one, one electron in the outer shell. So this is 
group one. And actually the reason why we have those elements in group one is because they have one electron in the outer shell. Does this work for all the other groups? Well, we could take a look at group two. We won't bother drawing out all the different, um, the structure of the atoms. We can just see the electron structure. And for beryllium, it's two, two. Magnesium, it's two, eight, two. So yes, it works for beryllium and magnesium. There's the electronic structures there. And in fact, we could probably go through all of them and show that. So let's just quickly have a look at boron. That's two, three. Next one down is aluminium, and that's 283. So there we go. Atoms in group three have three electrons in the outer shell. So a very important point here is that the group number tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell of the atoms of that element. And this is a very, very important point, so we will highlight it brightly in green there. There we go. The group number tells you the number of electrons in the outer shell. We need to look at the details of group zero. So the first element in group zero right at the top there is helium. You can't see that, but it is helium. And that has two electrons. So the electron structure is just two. And in fact, that's a full outer shell. The first shell can only take two. If we look at the second atom, or the, the atoms of the second element, we will see that it's two, eight. And if we went further down, that's actually neon. And if we went further down, we would see that the shells, the outermost shells, are full for all the elements in group zero. And the way we describe that is that we say that we have a stable arrangement of electrons. A stable arrangement of electrons in all elements in group zero. And that makes those elements very, very unreactive. And that's an important point because the number of electrons in the outer shell doesn't only tell you the group number, but it also determines the kind of chemical reactions those elements take part in. So it determines the chemical reactions that the elements take part in based on the electrons in the outer shell. That determines the chemical properties. And because we have a stable arrangement of electrons in group zero, they are very, very unreactive. Okay, so we're going to look at the details of each of those groups in the next upcoming videos.